Okay, let's get this out of the way. I understand the situation with my cam. I keep trying to make it go back to my actual skin color, but it wipes me out. I'm just really pale. Anyways, I am not the main focus of this right now. The main focus right now is going to be Panic at the Disco. And primarily this video is going to focus on Ryan Ross and Brendan Yuri, which is a whole... So um, I just made a TikTok for this and I thought while well, it was fresh in my head, why don't we go ahead and just make a little bit of a more lengthy video on this. So um, to start off, if you don't know, Panic of the Disco, one of the, like kind of considered one of the core, um, I want to say mid early 2000s emo bands. Um, I don't want to say this and like become for when people are going to be like Midwest is the real emo. No, we're talking like probably 2008 prime they were like playing on the radio and at the very beginning you know of panic of the disco ryan ross was the guitarist brendan yuri why did i say it like that we're just gonna keep recording but i don't know why brendan yuri <laughs> um obviously is still pretty much the full band at this point but at the time you know he was the lead singer and everything like that and also when ryan ross walked away john walker the bassist also left they kind of left together and that's what we're going to get into so um around like july 2009 ryan ross came out and did this interview which is where i got the bulk of this information but i did so much research like beyond that um and he pretty much said like they left with creative differences. Primarily the differences were between Ryan and Brendan. So Brendan wanted to do more pop music, which he did end up doing and it worked out really well for him. And Ryan wanted to kind of continue this whole, you know, um, classic rock, Beatles, you know, Beach Boys inspired music, which he went on to do um, and unfortunately didn't do as well as Panic at the Disco. but. Um, so what he said was they, they left the band um, to kind of embark on musical excursion of their own, yada yada. Um, so I guess the split had kind of been in the works from for a long period of time, which is interesting because the band wasn't really like a long-lived band at that time. And um, they had a few out, they had two albums out, I want to say, at that time. Um, so... They claimed that the split had been in the works for a while, but fans didn't notice, so it sounds like there was a lot of drama kind of like within the band. So John and Ryan kind of decided they're going to start this new band together. Um, and at the time, John was actually living with Ryan, which is kind of interesting. So they were like spending all their time together. They were writing music. And then in the background, the rest of the band wasn't talking. So they there was clearly like a lot of drama going on in the background. Like Brendan wasn't talking to John, wasn't talking to Ryan. You know, the band was just fully split, which kind of explains that next album that comes out vices and virtues where a lot of fans at the very beginning thought i mean even the music videos were kind of playing homage to the breakup <laughs> you know what i mean the big breakup in the band because it was totally like by the end of it it was like a totally different band but nonetheless without getting too deep into that and sticking you know straight to the subject that could go on and on so the big thing was there were a lot of differences between brennan yuri and ryan ross of course and then at the time, Pete Wentz and Brendan were best friends. I mean, also Pete Wentz signed the band. So technically Pete Wentz was everybody's boss. And you see a lot of like their friendship kind of coming out in like the later years with that, like, oh, who remembers Drunk History, right? That was that was the iconic um, Brendan being incredibly intoxicated and talking about Fall Out Boy. But yeah, I mean, you see them together. They've been best friends for a long time. So because of this, Pete Wentz was pretty outward and anti Ryan Ross at the time and he took Brendan's side. Although it kind of sounds like Brendan and Ryan didn't really have as much drama as maybe Pete was kind of getting in there. And now bear in mind, Brendan Yuri and Ryan Ross were the best of friends. And so this was this was interesting um, because for a long time, you know, they'd be seen literally like kissing each other. Um, and later on, Ryan kind of came out and said, well, you know, like Brendan would kiss Ryan on the lips he would kiss him on the neck, like on stage. And Ryan repeatedly said that he did not like this, but this was sort of their image. This was like a whole thing that people ship. Um, and, you know, uh, we're gonna, I, I, that definitely puts me to more allegations, but we're gonna hit that at the end. So, I mean, bear in mind, Brendan Urie dated Audrey Kitching at the same time that Audrey Kitching's best friend, Jack Vanek, dated Brian Ross. And then they all kind of had a breakup at the same time, which I don't really know was like really related, but it was just interesting because it was like, they were this whole, 
live journal, MySpace dream that if you were an emo kid back in the early days, you followed almost religiously. They were, they were the core group and kind of remained the core group for a bit of time. So now we're going to talk into like the big incident that happened after their friendship breakup and band breakup happened. So there was this girl online named Chelsea Lynn. Um, and she was actually catfishing, pretending to be Brennan Urie to Ryan Ross. So essentially she was like an obsessed fan. Um, allegedly she had like a whole lot of like this strew of mental disorders and she obsessively followed the Yuri's. She was obsessed with Sarah Yuri. She was obsessed with Brennan Yuri. She ran a fan blog. Um, and it's interesting because she posted these like rare images and everybody followed her because she was getting all of this rare content that nobody was seeing anywhere else. But she was getting that information because she was actually hacking into all of the Yuri's close contacts, Facebooks and stuff like that, like all of their social media. And she was stealing these images and posting them. So it gets a little bit worse. So she made some fake accounts and she was pretending to be like the Yuri's family members. And she had this like full spreadsheet, um, all of their personal addresses, phone numbers, information. She had everything. So through this, she ends up actually hacking Shane's Facebook messages ryan ross gets ryan ross's personal phone number and from there with ross's history so she's pretending to be brendan yuri trying so hard to rekindle the relationship and ryan was like all for it like this was his best friend he was so down for it you know like she even went as far as to make a fake instagram for brendan yuri and convinced ryan ross that was him ryan literally fell for it and was commenting on all this stuff so like she was like fishing for details um Apparently she got him to open up like they were talking about Pan and Gavidisco's actual split. They were talking about possibly getting back together. Um, Ryan confided in him in like family issues, you know, relationship issues. And they like talked about their broken friendship. So this went on for nine months. Imagine this. They were best friends kind of falling out and you hear back from the other best friend and like you think you're going to be friends and everything like that. And it's actually not the person. I think that's just so wild because what ended up happening was chelsea confided in another user who was so freaked out about the situation reached out direct to shane which was ryan's then manager at the time and shane actually like confirmed that this happened and told ryan ryan got really upset ryan confirmed that it happened to fans and he was really not okay i guess this took a giant mental toll on him like he had to go to rehab he posted some really 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 sad images online and also chelsea ended up making a whole tumblr apology where she admitted that all of this happened um she said that you know she had to come forward because it was causing her like severe severe suicidal ideations she was having just you know a strew of you know everything going on it was eating at her she felt really guilty and what she was doing to ryan was absolutely terrible so what this did to her what this did to ryan and what this did really for like the potential of panic ever having ryan ross as a member of the band ever having the friendship rekindle it destroyed it because you know i guess they ended up meeting up later on at adam levine's halloween party 2015 and they talked but then afterward, Brendan tried to reach out to Ryan, but never heard back. And I can't say I blame Ryan because I don't think I'd ever trust that unless it was in person ever again. Um, also, a little backtracking, though, in the timeline of things, Brendan did have a wedding where he married Sarah in 2013, and he did not invite Ryan. And Ryan actually tweeted about this and was like pretty upfront, like it's in the long lines of when he doesn't invite you to the wedding. So... There's also some weird timeline in there where I guess Ryan's old manager, Shane, like he had control of Ryan's social media and he was using this to say like really rude things to ex-members of Panic at the Disco. It's just, I feel really bad for Ryan because I, gen I genuinely think that he was a victim in a lot of this and he had a lot of stuff done to him. And so a lot of fans ended up not liking him, like not really realizing the whole story and people were taking sides and they didn't really understand like there's so much more going on. Um... You know, they just had differences in music. So, whatever. I mean, regardless, I don't think they're ever going to be friends again. I don't really know if we have an update on that. And unfortunately, Brennan Yuri isn't really in the spotlight anymore. And it's sad because, you know, up just a few years ago, Brendan Yuri was like the dream boat of everybody. Like wearing, you know, Panic at the Disco was like this flag of honor almost. Um, and then stuff kind of started unraveling. You have the accusations of Zach Hall, which was the bodyguard 
they were pretty bad, you know, down weeks. Wife Breezy actually came forward with, you know, harassment of, you know, S in nature by him towards her, which was really bad. And then, you know, S.A. started coming up uh, where people accused Brendan of apparently S.A. towards a minor. And there's just like this whole history of bad things that went in there. I don't know if I want to get too much into the allegations in this video since we're already about 10 minutes in. But, um, you know, all in all, that's kind of a brief timeline of everything that went down. It's just really unfortunate because this is one of the first generations that you kind of see forming out, obviously, from the internet, right? So this was like the first generation of like music and, you know, it's interesting because you could read all of Ryan Ross's personal blogs on LiveJournal. You still can. You can actually, you know, everything on the internet pretty much doesn't leave. So you can kind of hop on to like one of those little time machine things on the internet and go back to certain pages and read them as they were. Of course, screen caps and the fact that the band was so big. All of it's detailed and you can find the screen caps for all of this, unfortunately. So um, this was kind of that first generation of, you know, bands growing up on the internet, you know, literally growing up on the internet and posting and saying things that they probably shouldn't have. And, you know, this is going to follow them for a bit. Um, and unfortunately, because of all of this, it was so easy for fans to get involved. It was so easy for a fan to obsess so bad, hack into all of their things um, and just kind of like ruin this friendship. Um, I don't know that we'd really seen that much before, which is which is a very interesting thing. So, um, you know, and then also the other the other thing that was going on, there was like all those blogs where they were literally like talking about all of those emo bands and then the emo bands would I know Ryan Ross was a big one who would read them and he would kind of snap back at them and like say things and he would get it would be a whole thing. So if you have any interest in that, just Google <laughs> Ryan Ross live journal um his posts with jack vanek are hysterical so there you have it that is the um really rocky timeline of ryan ross and brendan yuri kind of in short without going into every single detail but getting into kind of like the meat of it um i just made a shorter video on tiktok but if you don't already follow me on tiktok i have the same handle it's at email chronicles that's one of my main um, forms of social media and the one that i'm the best at even though and, uh, and um, I, yeah, I'm going to try to continue uploading these. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Um, okay, love all of you.